hearing on House Bill 540, an act relative to motor vehicle inspections, and recognize the prime sponsor, Representative Murphy. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. For the record, my name is Keith Murphy. I represent the town of Bedford. Uh, this is a very simple bill, Mr. Chairman. It makes car inspections every other year instead of the current every year. Uh, it's revenue neutral to the state. It would save the citizens of our uh, state $11 million a year in inspection fees. Um, this is a free market bill. Uh, just to clear something up quickly, emissions testing would not still need to be annual. Uh, I'll get into that in a, in a, in a few minutes uh, as I go further. You all have a copy of my testimony, so I will not read it line for line. and I'll try to do you a bit of a favor. Um, just to put some facts out there. 30 states do not require safety inspections at all. Um, that's 11 more than it was when the federal government repealed their mandate in 1976. They include states like Connecticut, Michigan, Colorado, New Jersey, states that have lots of snow, lots of rust, the same sort of climate we have. Um, five additional states almost never require inspections. I'm, I originally moved here from Maryland 10 years ago. In Maryland, you almost never get an inspection. If you buy a used car, then your, your car gets inspected. But if you buy a car new and run it for 15 years, that car will never see a, a, a shop for a sticker. Um, of the, the last 15 states, three require biannual inspections, including uh, Rhode Island and Missouri, and 12, including us, obviously, requires annual inspections. I did a fair amount of research on this topic. Uh, there's been five studies that I could locate done in the last 20 years uh, regarding the, the effectiveness of these inspections, and four of the five uh, show that they are completely ineffective. I provided copies of those four studies uh, to, to your clerk, Mr. Chairman. Uh, cars are better made today, safer than ever, which is why the mandate was repealed uh, almost um, in fact, over 30 years ago. Of those 11 states that repealed their mandate, not one has ever replaced it. Not one has ever reenacted it. And common sense says that if you do away with a requirement and the uh, accident rates go up and the fatality rates go up, the state would reenact it. It's never happened. And think about the last time you drove through Rhode Island or Connecticut states with biennial or no inspections at all. Um, you know, you, you, you didn't see mufflers falling off cars and tires flying off of, uh, of cars. I can say, having lived in a state that rarely did inspections, you are no less safe there, putting aside the, the, the stack of studies that your clerk has. Uh, the bill does not affect any kind of commercial vehicles or buses. Um, cars over 25 years old are already done biennially. Um, I have a 74 MGB convertible in my, in my garage. I could drive that car up here every day, and that car would see a stick, would get a sticker every other year. But your brand new car in the, in the garage needs to be done every year. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I've included for your reference a paragraph of each of those four studies, just detailing what their findings. Um, the one study that did, did find some sort of benefit was done by Pennsylvania. The PennDOT study um, found some sort of marginal benefit that state received $16 million from selling stickers. So to the extent that sticker revenue and uh, lobbyists have an impact here, imagine what it would have in a state like Pennsylvania. Um, the only opposition from the bill comes from a lot of the people sitting behind me, uh, the auto shop owners and, and the New Hampshire auto dealers. Um, obviously, they're going to claim that the, their motive is safety. The real motivation here, and I can't say that I blame them, is that they currently have a law that benefits them. No other industry that I'm aware of forces everyone in the state to be their customer every year. Um, right now, the New Hampshire Auto Dealers website has a has alert on this bill, uh, has an alert that declares, quote, this bill certainly will have an impact on your business. Um, having lived in several other states, I can tell you that those states still have auto shops, still have auto dealers, and one of these sites, the one from 2002, looked specifically at repair shop revenue and found that there is no difference. Shops continue to do well. There's no drop in revenue. I think it's frankly a lot of scaremongering, and I, I don't blame the uh, auto shop dealers or the auto shop owners for coming here today. They're, I welcome their participation in the process, but they're, they're frankly being lied to by uh, some of the misinformation going out there on this. Um, as far as emissions, 15 states do not test emissions at all. 19 require emissions testing biennially, or the majority, and 14, including us, uh, require an annual test. According to DES, if the, state, if the bill passes as drafted, the state would have to apply administratively to the EPA for biennial testing. 
They were very clear that, that uh, approval is not guaranteed. However, biennial testing is explicitly allowed in the Clean Air Act. The e EPA has approved California, Massachusetts, D.C., Maryland. Best of my knowledge and the best of the knowledge of the person I spoke to at DES, uh, they've never declined an application. Um, now, those places all have obviously real smog problems. Um, the uh, application process could take up to 12 months to complete. That information came out after the hearing in the House, uh, so an amendment may be in order. In, in my opinion, the ideal amendment would direct DES to make the application and then change the effective date, um, uh, add a contingency to make, it to make the effective date contingent upon EPA approval. So there's no chance that anyone would have to go for simply an emissions test. That's certainly not what I want to see. Um, and I would just add it doesn't make much sense to me to have our citizens inspect their cars twice as often for emissions as someone who lives in downtown Los Angeles or Boston. No sense at all. Um, the fiscal note did show a slightly positive impact uh, that came over in the House budget. So, is there any questions? Thank Happy to answer. Do we have questions for Representative? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a lot of people wishing to speak, so I'm going to try and work my way through this the best I can. I have uh, Senator Fenton Roman who is in favor but not wishing to speak, and I have Senator Ray White who is in favor of wishing to speak. Senator White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, I'm Senator Ray White, District 9. Uh, I also am in favor of this bill. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, commend uh, Representative Murphy for bringing the bill. He's a very uh, studious kind of guy. He did a lot of research on this, um, a lot of research on other states, uh, asked me to come alongside him and uh, be a co-sponsor of this bill, and, and I did so because uh, I was very impressed with uh, his uh, homework, his methodology, and so forth. This bill appealed to me because of uh, really two aspects, uh, freedom and personal responsibility, two things that I talked about all the time when I campaigned. I believe that uh, government uh, ought not to uh, intervene except when it needs to, when there's a compelling uh, public uh, cause, either safety or uh, uh, protect the public from uh, financial malfeasance, things like that. and. Uh, Secondly, uh, personal responsibility. People need to be uh, responsible for their own uh, behaviors and actions. I think that this bill uh, really goes right to the heart of those two things. Uh, as evidenced by uh, Representative Murphy's testimony, many, many states do not require inspections or do not require them on an annual basis. Uh, we should be like that. We're the live free or die state. And then personal responsibility. There's going to be a lot of testimony about uh, car issues and car problems, but my feeling is uh, people need to step up and, and take responsibility. Many of our cars today have uh, all kinds of gizmos that ma measure all kinds of things. Uh, warning lights go on, they're responsible people, uh, and hopefully most of us are responsible, take action when something like that happens. Emissions in particular I find objectionable because First of all, it's not even a safety issue. There's going to be a lot of testimony here about safety issues. Emissions is not a safety issue. Even if there is an emission problem in your car, it's not a safety issue. It doesn't have to be dealt with tomorrow or the next day. If it's a week later or a month later, whatever, uh, not an issue. And again, the systems in cars today will tell you that there's an emissions issue, and so you go deal with it. So if you think about the car you're driving, um, this makes sense. Uh, one last comment I'd make is I, I did talk to a lot of people about this bill. I have a lot of auto dealers live in Bedford. I, I always wonder why Bedford is auto dealer central, but it is, and so I got a lot of traffic about this bill. And I would ask them, well, if we said uh, maybe amended the bill to say new cars don't have to be uh, inspected annually. We go every other year on new cars, but maybe when a car is five years old, we go back to annual. You know, trying to find some common ground like legislators do. And quite frankly, there was just no, they took no quarter on this. So there was no room for, nobody wanted to offer anything in terms of uh, uh, a change or a compromise. And that always troubles me as a legislator uh, when that's the case. So I do uh, uh, urge you uh, ought to pass on this bill. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, Keith Murphy for all the uh, really good work and research he did. He was very analytical and uh, very cerebral in his approach to this bill. Thank you. Any questions for Senator White? 
Bingo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in an effort here to be kind of fair, um, I've got a number of sheets. I, I'm going to go through them one sheet at a time, and I do have quite a few state representatives. Normally, I go with state reps first, but I have so many. Um, Co-sponsors? I'm going to. I can do that. Um, co-sponsors, but is there any state rep who has an immediate conflict that they have to leave? So I will, I will go and mix up my state reps and some that are for it and some opposed and I guess Representative Valancourt vocalizing and being a co-sponsor will call Representative Valancourt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Steve Valancourt. I represent Manchester Ward 8, home of the Manchester Boston Regional Airport. I am here as a co-sponsor of this bill. I, in a sense, feel I have died and gone to legislative heaven because the first two speakers today really summed up my philosophy, Representative Murphy and Senator White. In fact, I sponsored this bill twice before in the House. And the reason I sponsored it the first time was because a constituent in Manchester called me and asked me to sponsor it. And this is just to say that elections have consequences. That constituent back then was Keith Murphy, who is now the prime sponsor of this bill as the duly elected representative from Bedford. When this bill was heard twice before, the Transportation Committee in the House didn't like it, but we almost overturned them on the House floor six years ago. This year, only one member of the Transportation Committee voted for it, but we overturned that committee by a tremendous margin on the House floor. It wasn't close, and it wasn't along party lines either. This is one of those rare things where Democrats and Republicans came together to realize you know, we really don't need something, and Senator White spoke of a compromise. This bill is a compromise. 30 states don't have inspections at all. So to go to every other year is, in fact, a compromise. We would like to cut taxes as Republicans and maybe as Democrats. We would really like to do that this year. The House budget proposes certain tax cuts if we can do them. We may not be able to do that. But in essence, this bill is a tax cut. A tax cut of at least $25 to $35, $40 every other year for somebody. Because by going to that inspection station every year, we're paying that much to have it inspected. But it's also a savings of my time as a human being. Probably two hours by the time it takes me to get there and wait and get home. So this, in a sense, is telling the people that we care for you. We may not be able to cut your taxes. We they may not be able to reduce that rooms and meals tax. We hope to reduce that registration on your car <coughs> surcharge. But we are concerned about you enough to say that we can do something for you. And this bill does something for you, money-wise and time-wise, without jeopardizing anybody's safety. We heard in the House tremendous testimony that while New Hampshire is a fairly safe state, New Jersey, which has every other year inspections, is safer than we are. So there is no correlation between safety and this. If there were, we wouldn't be pushing for it. When Representative Murphy first asked me to sponsor this, I thought to myself, you know, this not, may not go over very well in the House. But then when I found Myla Padden in research coming up with the fact that 30 other states don't have it at all, I said, we should be home free with this. So maybe after six years of trying, we will be home free. We're halfway there, and I hope you can push us over the finish line. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Keith Carlson, in favor, wishing to speak? Yes. All right, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Committee. My name is Keith Carlson. I just represent myself. I'm from Keene, and I support this bill. Um, basically, it looks like New Hampshire is one of the most restrictive states in the nation for this, which is really strange. Um, you have to wonder if it's more restrictive than Massachusetts, you know, is something going on here. 
But if this bill passed, it would save the taxpayers in New Hampshire $10 million or so a year. Additionally, it would save us hundreds of thousands of hours. So um, like um, the representative just said, maybe two hours a year. So that's, you know, that's a lot of people in New Hampshire. I think they said there's like, um, if you read the bill, it says something about 700,000 cars or something. So think about all those hours. Okay, people in New Hampshire tend to be safe drivers. In fact, um, New Hampshire is such a safe state, I only pay $280 a year in auto insurance. And I have really good insurance. So why do I pay such a small amount? Because I live in New Hampshire. I have a perfect driving record. Because I take care of my car. Because I change my tires every year. Because, you know, I care about my car. I get my oil changed, okay? So why am I being punished? Why do I have to go through all this expense and all this trouble, this $30 tax every single year for this inspection? So if you want to save the people in New Hampshire money, save the people in New Hampshire time, please take this opportunity to help your constituents. And thank you for giving me your time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you, thank you very much. I have a Kathy Cummins who is opposed, not wishing to speak. I have a representative seat, and I can't, I can't read the last name, who is in favor but not wishing to speak. Um, Michael Fitzgerald from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Sure, I'd be happy to wait until after the Department of Safety if you prefer. To okay. I have a representative, Kyle Jones. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. And how will try and keep this three? Thank you. Mr. Chair and Honored Senators, for the record, my name is Kyle Jones, uh, representing Stratford District 1, <coughs> the City of Rochester. Um, this is a really no-brainer bill to support. Today, only a few states, including New Hampshire, require annual car inspections and emissions tests. It's high time that New Hampshire joined the many other states with their common sense practice of only requiring car inspections every two years. Thank you. We love those testimonies. <laughs> and I'm assuming there were no questions. Thank you. Brevity is a, a virtue. Um, Commissioner Earl Sweeney, who is opposed, not wishing to speak, but maybe reserved to the end if necessary. Thank you. Uh, Representative Osgood, opposed, wishing to speak. Thank you. My name is Joe Osgood. I represent Sullivan District 4, and I'm here in opposition to this bill. And in full disclosure, I own and operate an automobile repair shop. I believe I'm coming here representing my constituents and speaking as a professional in the automobile field. And I am involved in my business to the point when I leave here, these hands will be getting dirty because I'll be working on cars. I don't own a business that somebody else uh, open uh, that controls. I, I work on cars when I'm not here. Um, I have a couple of things I want to go over and one of them is I heard in testimony that cars are made better. Uh, I would dispute that and I would tell you how I learned about that. In the automobile business we get information all the time. When the manufacturers build a car they send to their vendors the amount of hours they want a part to last in that car. Automobile manufacturers make more money on parts than they do on cars. And they have their vendors build them cars with the stipulation that they're going to break so they can sell parts. State inspections are a check and balance for the automobile manufacturer and have on numerous occasions created factory recalls because of parts that failed earlier than they were supposed to. So inspections are a good safety check and balance for the manufacturer. That is an that's a reason why a new car really doesn't need to be inspected for the first year. I would agree with that for the first two years. But while it's still under warranty, it needs to be checked so that numbers can be generated on these cars that are failing prematurely. And the state inspection stations do a very good job of that. As far as everybody in New Hampshire, 
being concerned about how their car is, I wish it was that way, and it's not. As far as me making more money because I inspect cars, I was thinking about that the other day, and there's a problem with that. Because technically speaking, if you let these cars stay on the road until they break while they're going down the road, I own two tow trucks. I'm going to go get the car, I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to fix the part that failed and all the collateral damage that was caused when that part failed. Uh, cars are not as safe as they're saying they are. As far as the uh, revenue neutral, uh, I beg to differ with that. This is a 100% increase in fees to the truck repair facilities because the stickers that are used to inspect cars are the same ones that are used to inspect trucks. The truck repair shops are going to have the price of their stickers double so that we can put through a bill that will leave New Hampshire harmless but not the motoring public harmless because they're going to pay the same price for the sticker when they're only getting their car checked once every two years. So technically speaking this is a 100% fee increase for the truckers. Uh, that's a bad thing in this economy. Truckers are not looking for that. Um, vintage cars get inspected every two years. I totally agree with that. Anybody here that has a vintage car, I would expect that because of the value of it, they keep a pretty close eye on it. So they're going to fix whatever goes wrong and they're not going to probably be driving it in the winter time. Anybody drives a vintage car in the winter time, in my estimation, needs their head examined. Thank you very much for listening to my testimony and I hope it was informative. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Senator Horsley. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, Representative Oscar. Um, you were talking about a 100% increase for the truckers since the sticker price mm -hmm. would, would double. Um, of the fee that the truckers pay, though, for they pay some for the sticker, but then the inspection fee is, I assume, much larger. What is the inspection fee? Uh, the average inspection, I've been kind of looking at truck repair shops because I inspect a few heavy vehicles, but not enough to make it affect my business. Guys own a car and I inspect their heavy truck. Um, the truck repair shops, I believe their price for an inspection runs around $49. Um, but it's mandated by the, the feds anyway. They, they've got to get them trucks inspected. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Representative Lars Christensen speaking in favor. And Lars, I don't see him. Sergeant Stephen Case speaking. Yes, I actually defer behind uh, Director Bailey. Mr. Chairman, if we come out together, we could save, probably save time for the Absolutely. <coughs> I apologize, Director. I didn't even. I got enough papers here. I missed you. Fine, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Rick Bailey. I'm the Director of the Division of Motor Vehicles. With me is Sergeant Stephen Case from the State Police. Um, we have three documents that we're handing out that I will go over briefly. Um, a lot of the discussion has been about the New Hampshire situation, and that's what we've tried to target our information to. The uh, first sheet is labeled New Hampshire Safety Inspection Data, and I think it's the most telling uh, for the discussion before us. On that sheet, we have information for three years, the past three years that we have data on, 2008, 2009, 2010, for the safety inspection failures. And we have about 1.4 million registered vehicles in the state of New Hampshire, and that's been reasonably consistent for a while, um, and it is fairly consistent over these three years. 
what we see here is that the most prevalent reason that cars fail safety inspection is brakes. And it's about 80,000 vehicles per year. That's cumulative across all uh, ages of vehicles, all types of, of vehicles, but it's been fairly consistent. And that data comes from um, raw data that we have, which is represented in a little bit more detail in the second handout, which is uh, labeled inspection rejection rates by model year uh, for the three years. And what this second handout tells us <coughs> is clearly, as uh, a number of speakers have said, the newer cars uh, fail less and the older cars fail more. But it also shows that newer cars do fail. Um, there are thousands of them that are failing each year uh, that are three and four years old. Um, the last item that we have uh, is a copy of the study that was done on behalf of the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, which like other studies, if you would like to spend hours reading and contemplating, you can. Um, but the bottom line is in the Pennsylvania case, they found that the program of safety inspections was uh, effective and help save lives. What I think from our standpoint, um, the most important thing that we see in New Hampshire is that not everyone is a car aficionado. Not everyone takes the care that we wish they would of their vehicles. If we go to a <coughs> two-year inspection cycle, that suggests that there are 70 to 80,000 people out there that are going to drive around on brakes again that are having a problem until they fail and we'll all hope that they're not the car behind us. Um, statistically, 6% of the cars tested may not be a lot, but 77,000 vehicles on our roads with, with brakes that did not pass, um, I think is significant to us here. Um, and there are a number of other things that, uh, you know, we see steering issues are the second most likely uh, problem. Tires are always uh, preempted at 55,000 cars a year. Um, we don't believe that public safety will be served by extending the time period between inspections because the inspection program is working and it's finding vehicles that have problems and it's getting them fixed, protecting not only the owner, but those of us who share the roads with the owner. Uh, with that, I ask for any comments from Sergeant Case. Thank you. The, currently, the inspection criteria, the annual inspection is very simply a snapshot in time. Speaking from experience, uh, having a teenage driver at home, if I were to have my vehicle inspected today and it were to have the minimum amount of brake pad and the minimum amount of tire tread, a good weekend of driving with a teenager come Monday, that minimum uh, spec may be gone, probably will be gone. Now, in theory, with a two-year inspection program, if not for a good maintenance program at home, it's now going to go two years before anyone bends over and looks at the tread on the tire or puts a gauge on that brake pad. Conceptually, that's very scary. The percentage of motor vehicle stops that uh, the division I represent encounters conservatively, 20%, maybe a little bit more, stops, uh, the impetus for the stop may be for a uh, equipment violation. Of those that we encounter, it's not unusual for those customers to be of the mind that they care less about the safety uh, components, not about safety, but the safety component of their vehicle. They make the assumption that the professionals are looking at it annually or some other uh, snapshot in time and they're good to go. That's patently unfair. Uh, it's our hostile environment that we have in New England. Let's sp focus on New Hampshire. I think you would find a number of individuals north of Concord in that environment that they live in would say to be an unfair comparison to the closest state to New Hampshire that has inspections every two years, that being New Jersey. New Jersey versus northern New Hampshire. Uh, we'll let that speak for itself. As far as the monetary impact, New Hampshire 
doesn't regulate the dollar amount that is assessed by the inspection stations. An inspection station technically can charge nothing out of the goodness of their heart to service their customers. Maybe they have some other uh, connection with them. Or those prices can be all the way up to, oh my God. The state does not dictate whether it's passenger vehicles or commercial vehicles. That's regulated by the individual inspection station. <coughs> Speaking of commercial vehicles, if this bill were to impact commercial motor vehicles, it would put us out of line with federal criteria, which is at the least annual. Currently, it's uh, twice a year in New Hampshire. That's a good thing. Uh, the, the unit that I represent at State Police is tasked with um, interacting with our commercial motor vehicle, the vehicles themselves, and the operators. It is a higher percentage of problems that um, deal exclusively with safety components that wind up putting them out of service roadside until such time that they can remedy the problem and continue on their way or put it out of service completely. Uh, very, very important. Furthermore, if <coughs> this bill were to impact school buses, uh, I think that speaks volumes. To put that m most precious commodity, those passengers, our students, at a higher risk for not ha uh, having those vehicles scrutinized as they currently are, I think would be patently unsafe and unfair to those individuals, to those households, to, again, that most precious commodity. The, let me get on my thoughts just a moment. I'll leave it at that at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to continue. I'm on my second sheet. Um, I'll just make note that there are a, a, a group here of state reps I'll call up that are in favor, and then I have a whole list of uh, uh, individuals that are opposed, so um, we'll be getting to you. Representative Dan McGuire speaking in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is Dan McGuire. I represent Merrimack County District 8, the towns of Allentown, Epsom, and Pittsfield. But today I'm actually representing uh, the Granite State Taxpayers Organization. I'm a board member, and we are uh, strongly in favor of this bill uh, because we don't really care <coughs> whether um, taxpayers save money directly because their taxes are lower or, or whether indirectly by cutting other kinds of costs on them and regulations and so on. What I'm here to talk about today is um, I want to counter two uh, main arguments that you'll hear against the bill. So I want to sort of rebut those arguments. The first one is the, the safety argument that, that uh, somehow we will be safer um, by having annual inspections as we do now than we would biannual or, or even none. Um, so I took Dave, I went to the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website and I took um, 15, there's 15 years of, of highway fatality data there um, and I averaged it, what's available is 1994 through 2008. So this chart shows you how many fatalities per 100 million miles driven uh, there are for each of those states over that 15 year period. Um, you can see that we're the fifth safest state, um, so we're, we're doing quite well. Um, but there really is no correlation between safety inspections and uh, fatalities. Okay? If you look at the top five states, for example, two of them have annual inspections, two of them have no inspections whatsoever, one of them has biennial inspections. If you look at the bottom of the list, there are states that don't have any. There are states that have annual inspections. Um, if you look scattered through the list, states that have annual inspections are all the way through the list. States that don't have any inspections, states that have biennial inspections. So, so no matter how you look at the data, there really isn't a correlation um, between safety, the frequency of safety inspections and fatalities. Um, 
if you take an average, the biennial one is actually the slightly best average, but I think it just happens to be there's very few such things. You know, it, it just randomly came up a little bit better than the others. But anyways, so um, that's the safety data, and I, I don't think there's any correlation. Um, the second one is uh, the economic argument that somehow um, we're going to see less money in the um, in the uh, auto repair business, less employment perhaps, that sort of thing. Um, and there's a very common sort of economic fallacy, which is what's called the seen versus the unseen. That that. Um, what we, it's probably true, uh, you know, although uh, Representative Murphy had data that con con contradicted this, but it's probably true that by having fewer inspections, there will be less revenue in the auto repair industry, probably less employment there. But that money doesn't just sort of disappear, all right? That's the scene, right? But the unseen is what all that money would go to in, in replace of that, you know, the money is still in the economy, would be hiring people, would be used for all kinds of other things, right? Um, but what would happen is that if we stop requiring something that doesn't have a useful purpose and instead allow people to spend money on what they want to spend money on, people's happiness is improved, right? So people would get more of whatever it is they want. It could be savings, it could be, um, you know, other useful things, and, you know, food, who knows what. Um, and so, so it's, there, it's not that there's going to be somehow less employment or less um, satisfaction in the economy in general, there's going to be more if this bill is passed. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Senator Carroll. Thank you, Representative. I just want to go back to your um, uh, what sure. you had given us here on the fatalities. Um, is this research done that these fatalities are caused by uh, uh, a defect in the car, or are these just fatalities? Total fatalities uh, in these states over that 15-year period. So there's no correlation necessarily between the shape of the car and the Right, and all I'm saying is that there's no correlation between inspections and, and so on. Yeah. And I'd like to, if you mind, one thing that I think would be fascinating is you'll notice that the safest state in the country is Massachusetts. It's 25%, you know, it, it's, we're fifth best, but it's 25% better than we are. So I think it would be fascinating to try to figure out why, you know, and, and uh, study you know, if we're interested in safety, what are they doing right that we are not, perhaps? Thank you. Uh, Senator Horsley. <laughs> Chair, thank you, Representative uh, McGuire. Have you seen this study, the Pennsylvania study? You just I did? haven't. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. Representative Greg Hill. Representative Hill. Point one. Point one. Representative Susan Delimus. Thank you, Mr. Welcome. Chair. Thank you, Senators. Good morning. For the record, my name is Susan Delimus. I'm from Rochester, District 1, Stratford County. Um, this, I used to work on cars <laughs> many years ago. And uh, I just wanted to come in and, and reiterate, actually, what you've heard already. I'm not going to repeat what they've said, but I, I am in favor of this and in favor of what you've heard so far, testimony. Um, I did want to make one correction. The, the officer, I think, stated that the um, closest state to us that was New Jersey, but actually the closest is Connecticut, and New Jersey has no inspection, and Rhode Island actually has biennial inspection. Um, I have to say that all the testimonies that I've heard in, a, in opposition to this have, have been from, from garage owners and car dealers. And I, I have experienced once, just a few years back, after I'd moved to Rochester, 
I, as I said, I work on cars, so I know my cars. And normally, if we put them on the lift, I go and take a look, and, and some garages will allow you to look at your car. And I was told that my car needed some repair, and I had had that repaired the week prior to the inspection, knowing that I had to go into inspection. So I argued the case with them and, and asked if I could come in and see the, what they told me needed to be repaired, and lo and behold, oh, it didn't need to be repaired. So I, I wonder, when I have my cars inspected, am I being told the whole truth about what may or may not need to be taken care of in my car? Um, it's a, I, it does raise my eyebrows on that. Um, and how is it that, that the states that don't require any inspection whatsoever have safer records? I mean, that does seem to be a mystery, and that's been asked as well. Um, as far as recalls go, recalls are sent out to the automobile owner, and they're notified by the company that actually manufactured the vehicle. I have a BMW motorcycle. I've had two recalls on it, and each time the recalls, have, I've been notified of those recalls by the company and not by a, a repair station. So recalls are something that a person can handle in that way. Um, I think that uh, I'm done with my testimony. Thank, thank you for you. hearing me. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. I have a, a bill, um, Allen, Allerman, who signed in in favor but not wishing to speak? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Brandon Klein, Bank Chevrolet. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Mickey, opposed. Um, Bank Chevrolet, we do oppose this bill. I am also a volunteer firefighter. I've been working on cars since 1994. Um, parts do wear out. People don't change them until they have to. It's definitely a safety issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. David Dupont. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, from, I um, own an auto repair shop in Dover, New Hampshire, and uh, have been doing state inspections since I was in high school. Um, and it's not something I did a while ago. I mean, I, I do them now. I mean, so I'm in the field with my technicians. Uh, there's been a lot of talk, to talk about this as being a tax. Really what it is, is the best value on Main Street. Because nowhere can you go to get anything checked out for $40, particularly as complicated as an automobile. Uh, to ensure that it's safe. Um, there was references to safety in other states and that mass is safer than us, but they do have state inspections. So uh, I can't believe that that doesn't have some impact. Um, it's not a consumer fraud bill. I mean, uh, it's sad to hear when, we have, when there are other shops in my industry that have ethic issues. Uh, however, uh, the bill is not going to take care of This bill as it, as it presently stands right now not, is not going to take care of that. It will just defer them, the same issues uh, to twice a year, not, I mean, twice every, once every two years, not uh, once a year. Uh, as far as Maryland, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been down Maryland during a snowstorm. I mean, the place is paralyzed. I mean, cars are off the road. Uh, I just don't think that the motorists down there respond to the winter conditions like we do in New Hampshire. Uh, so I'm not sure that's a, that's a valid argument. And if you look at the Pennsylvania data, I think you can see that the state inspection program works. Uh, there's a lot of unintended consequences to this, and we've talked about uh, concerns about being lowering taxes. However, we haven't talked about the fact that if you defer maintenance, typically the inspection or, or inspections, typically ins the inspection process is going to be more thorough, which is going to flag more items, and it's also uh, issues going to cause more breakdowns. I mean, if you go to a lot of states, I was recently down in Florida, there were cars all over the road broken down. Uh, and Florida has no inspections. So rather than, um, you know, so the uh, other, the representative who talked about owning a shop talks about his towing business going up. That is probably a likely scenario 
what may also go up to consume is his fines. Because, you know, rather than getting a, an inspection by a shop that you can trust, who shows you what's wrong with your car, and says, hey, you've got ball tires, you may be having that discussion at the side of the road with a state trooper or a police officer with a fine resulting. And have a bid, it could be at an accident situation. I mean, I know probably most of the people in this room take care of their tires, but this inspection bill isn't about inspecting our own cars as much as it's about inspecting the cars that are coming down the road with you. You know, I mean, we have, uh, we're seeing uh, tire sizes go from 13, 14, and 15 inch to the norm now is 16 to even 20 inches, and those tires don't last as long. We have, we have New Hampshire State inspection standards that, are, that have been written for, for annual inspections. And I'm, I'm here to tell you right now that a lot of these high performance cars, or even minivans with large tire sizes on them and sports packages, those tires are not going to last 30,000 miles, and certainly the brakes will not. So, uh, and we're, we're, we're say it's a situation here where my technicians uh, are going to be in December of one year inspecting vehicles for a year, and it come January that car, that car is not going to need to be inspected for two years. But the inspection process <coughs> they're going to use is going to be one year. Brake pads and tires have a measured thickness, but a tire with a slightly worn ball joint or a crack in a bushing, that's a judgment call by the tech. And I'm here to tell you right now as a technician, if I have to look at something and say this thing's got to go two years, I'm going to not take a, a risk on it. I'm probably going to say this needs to be changed. Uh, we have salt brine in New Hampshire, we have, uh, which is an issue with our preconditioning that a lot of other states don't uh, have, a damp climate, uh, road conditions and, and regulations that don't require snow tires or chains in mountainous areas. Um, it, I just think that some of those other states may, may very well have. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a great consumer program because, I, you know, I send out $1,828 inspection cards a month right now, and my costs are, on, on those inspections are close to $22. I mean, if, if a consumer shops, he can get a good deal on an inspection. So, uh, the state, this program does not cost the state any money. And although the bill projects a revenue surplus, uh, an increase in surpluses in 012, it's going to reverse its wealth in 013. So, uh, and the consumers love the program. We have very few complaints by consumers that come in and get their cars inspected. So, I mean, uh, to wrap this up, uh, I just I hope you listen, you listen to the people that are in the field uh, and are working on cars and uh, the tow truck operators and the technicians such as myself and we're the ones that are seeing this stuff. And I'll just leave you that the average, uh, the fleet age on a vehicle right now in the country is 10 years. And if you look at new car sales, people are not replacing their cars. These cars are gonna be on the road a lot longer with the economy the way it is. So I question the validity of some of these studies because they're not based on the fleet of cars and they're not based on consumer preferences for not purchasing automobiles right now. And they're not based on tire technology. That's, that's, that's changed dramatically in the last few years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Okay. William Gurney? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Members. Thank you. For the record, my name is Bill Gurney. I own Gurney's Automotive Repair of Nashville, New Hampshire. I'm an ASC certified master technician with an L1 certification. I've been in the automotive repair business since 1976. I've heard a lot about statistics today, um, but statistics can be swayed either way. I will tell you that I am a professional. I have customers' cars in that, if they were not in for inspection, would fail on the road. There's no if, and, or but about that to the fact that they would fix it anyways, Generation Y, Generation X, is very different from the baby boomer generation, I think we'd all agree. I have those children. They will not, a lot of them, go into a repair facility unless they have a breakdown on the road or they're in for an inspection because they don't think of that. I heard a statistic of eight, uh, 80,000 cars that failed the brakes. And in, for the bill, 
they speak about people being responsible. If 1% of the 80,000 do not come in, that's 800 vehicles that will be on the road with a possible brake failure. I'm a professional, I have seen cars come in where not only is the brake pad worn to the rotor, now the surface of the rotor is gone and we are working on the air-cooled fins, the caliper has popped out of the uh, bore and we have catastrophic failure where there is no brakes in the car. 1% is 800 cars. I don't know statistics. Common sense. I cannot tell you the spirit of the bill to save consumers money. The state is going to double the cost of the inspection sticker to us, the um, garage. It's a hundred percent increase to us. If we turn and raise our rate, which is already, I will reiterate, Mr. DuPont, it's the best deal on Main Street, but if we raise our rate, it will be in the paper that we're thieves. It costs $24, $25 in hard costs to do an inspection and do it correctly. So common sense tells me this bill will not make the roads any safer. Common sense also tells me it will make the roads somewhat unsafer. Is that one accident per year? Does not have to be a fatality. What if it's just a back injury, a neck injury? It's one accident. Is it one a year? One every five years? I don't know. But I do know, I do not want my wife or my child in that car when that happens. And I will tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, not because I make money fixing cars, because we all make money based on what we all do in this room. I buy a TV, someone works for Best Buy. We all make money on each other's needs. Cars will be unsafer. It's a matter of fact. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. I have a representative, Manus, who signed in in favor, not wishing to speak. I have a representative, Heiko, who signed in opposed, not wishing to speak. I have a representative, Lambert, who signed in wishing to speak in favor. Thank you, uh, Chairman, Senator. And other senators, I'm sorry, I didn't get the appropriate. Welcome. It's my first time. I'm a little nervous. Um, I really look forward to coming in and being able to talk about this bill um, because everybody's interested in safety. Um, it's a, I, I was sitting in the back of the room thinking that it's really nice to see the gentleman from Gurney's here because he's fixed my brakes when they were squeaking, not because I had an inspection. Okay? Because intelligent people at risk will make good decisions. There are lots of studies. <clears throat> um, our people on our side um, in, in favor have turned in a number of different reports, some in favor and some opposed. State inspections have different, uh, different people have different opinions on, you know, what's going to increase safety. But nothing about this legislation prevents anyone from going out and getting an inspection any day they want to. If we go and repeal inspections completely, if you want one, you can walk in and get one. This isn't preventative. Their problem with inspections is that they don't just deal with safety, and I'm sorry to say they do create a revenue opportunity for many of the people who are involved in the process. I'm not accusing any of them of being bad. But when somebody came to me and asked me to look into this bill, I was stunned to find out that if you have a check engine light on, because your gas cap isn't uh, properly secured, they will do diagnostics until they find out why that light is on and you cannot get your car inspected or remove it and, and put it on the road until you remove that light. There are incidents where people have spent over $800 for diagnostics and the good news is you don't need any parts. The bad news is, oh, you need to tighten your gas cap. Now, I'd like to say that doesn't happen, but when somebody said that to me, I went, that's really funny because I've actually had the gas cap of the check engine light come on, take it to a shop and have them say, it's your gas cap. It's a lot of money. If we have things outside of safety that we are charging people for to fix as part of the inspection process. I would like to think that the inspection process says, hi, I'm going to check your tires, I'm going to check your brakes, I'm going to check this, we're going to check that. The problem is it's more inclusive than that. 
if you want to fix the problem. I think that's a great idea. But I don't think the rows become more safe when we are evaluating not just core safety requirements, but the entire umbrella covers way more than that. People get their tires checked. You know why? Because we live in New Hampshire, and if you don't, you're going to actually be in trouble during the winter. Have you ever driven in, uh, I don't know if you've ever driven in Baltimore, okay? But they drive at 75 miles an hour in rain. You're sitting there and saying, you know, they can't drive during the winter or the safety, is, safety inspections are the issue. It's a cultural issue as much as it is anything else. From a pure safety perspective, we have to trust, in my opinion, that the citizens of this state will take their safety in, into concern. Reasonable inspection periods of two years don't seem to make a substantial difference in terms of the overall safety of people getting into, in, into car accidents according to these other studies. I would appreciate it if you would take a look at the other studies and really consider whether or not we're doing the right things for our people in this economy because right now, giving them the opportunity to get their safety inspections once every two years, I believe is a better alternative. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you. You did a pretty good job for someone nervous. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Uh, Would you like copies of these other studies, or will you not read them? them. Okay. Mr. Cooney? Thank you, Mr. Chair and other senators for letting me speak. Uh, first, uh, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Mike Cooney, and uh, I'm the owner of Compton Motorsport. My wife uh, behind me, Mary Cooney, is a state rep representing Plymouth and Hebron. Any other towns, Mary? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to comment on the characterization, characterization of my profession, uh, that our purpose is profit-driven profit and that many of us are unscrupulous. I mean, this was started, this theme started when I was at the hearing uh, for the House. And um, I, I must say I resent it because the majority of shop owners are quite dedicated to, to the business and not ripping off the public. I can't speak for other shops, but this is not my motive for wanting yearly inspections. It's all about safety. If a customer feels that a garage is overcharging for services, they should go somewhere else. No one's being forced to go to a garage that they feel uncomfortable with, just as uh, if you feel uncomfortable with, with, a, with one physician, you should go to another physician. Um, personally, I feel good when I can tell the customer that, that their car passed without needing repairs. I would say uh, as uh, approximate average, 30% of the cars that are scheduled for state inspections do fail. Um, we've never had a customer complain about yearly inspections or the price. Technicians I've employed over the years take great pride in their skills, which result in cars being safe and roadworthy. And they feel they're doing a service when they're in the day's work, when they're inspecting cars. Um, it has been said that new cars shouldn't have to be inspected for at least two or more years. The truth is, the vehicle condition depends more on miles driven, type of driving, and conditions on the road, driving habits, uh, the actual time passed. Um, brakes typically need to be replaced from 25 to 50,000 miles. There are a lot of late model cars that, that are driven 20 to 40,000 miles a year in company use or sometimes personal use. I drive almost 50,000 50, miles a year myself. Um, we purchase used cars from various sources for resale, and uh, we, I tried to get most of our inventory in the mid-Atlantic state because, because of the weather that's been mentioned, the adverse weather conditions in New England. Uh, consumers are getting a better car as you further south you go. Um, we average $2,000 a vehicle getting these cars prepared for remarketing, and half of that $2,000 is spent on safety items, tires, brakes, and suspension. When we pass a vehicle, um, uh, it still does not mean that all the safety items are okay. 
uh, for a year, as we've talked, as has been mentioned in the snapshot of time. We do record it on the repair order that uh, people take with them that we recommend uh, that they take care of certain items in the near future. And there is a form that, uh, that can be provided um, by the New Hampshire Auto Deals Association that people can sign if you want to have uh, a, a better paper trail, that they understand why their car has failed and so on. I think that's a good idea to do also. And I might say, just as an aside, that this, uh, the whole system we have now works extremely well because they have a data collection system with a Gordon Darby as a, as a vendor that keeps track of, of cars, failures, and so on. It's a very good system. Um, uh, very few people, uh, it's been mentioned, people will take upon themselves to take care of their cars. Well, responsible people do. but. And there are people that may think they're responsible, but there are many people that are genuinely surprised when we tell them that their that their tires are are unsafe with minimal or minimal tread lift. And I will say, uh, I know uh, David Dupont mentioned about tire technology. I mean, people need to understand there are a lot of cars equipped with wide tires that have a different footprint, and when they have very little tread. They are extremely dangerous in the rain, and they will hydroplane much easier than narrow tires. Just as you know, in the snow, the narrow tires work well in the snow than wide tires. It's, it's a fact. It's physics. And and these cars in the rainstorm, a lot of people go off the road. And I would I would I would suspect that many crashes are due to tires with low tread. I mean, even. 30 seconds. It's you're, you better slow down because it's not going to shed the water, and you're you're not going to have any contact with the pavement. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Um, the bottom line is safety for all of us, all our children, for our children riding in a car or walking along a street that a car could have a suspension failure, failure and veer into the sidewalk. This is not a formality or unnecessary exercise or a matter of personal freedom or personal responsibility. It's the right thing to do, to take care of. These are land vessels we have, and they need to stay on the roads where they belong. The police do their job to patrol the roads. We, as shop owners, have a responsibility to make sure the cars are, uh, are, are safe to drive. And we're the ones that are underneath. The operators of cars look at their cars from the outside in. Uh, so anyone who understands machinery would understand that yearly inspections make common sense for the safety of the public. We know the vulnerability of the components. We see the weaknesses every day. That is why we are adamant that we don't want to be sharing the road with people who are driving cars with dangerously worn items that put everyone's, everyone surrounding them in danger. So I'm strongly opposed to this bill and hope that uh, you as a, a, a body of uh, people will uh, take this into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Seeing none, uh, thank you. Yes, Senator Forsyth. Oh, that's okay. I was, oh, Mr. Kennedy, I just oh, want to say for the record, and I think the other committee would agree with me, is that we don't look at with anybody from your profession to be more unscrupulous than, than any other profession. So I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Mary Cooney is signed in, opposed, not wishing to speak. Uh, Dan Bennett from the New Hampshire Auto Dealers, opposed, wishing to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I will be quick. I know there are a few um, other folks behind me that wish to speak as well. Um, as I am going through a few things, I would just like to pass this around real quick just as a, as a visual aid to you. Um, this is what folks use to measure brakes and tires. Um, that is two thirty seconds of, a, of, a, of a, a tread depth or a brake depth gauge. So just as a visual, you can see that's what will be left for um, tire tread that folks will then be traveling for um, 23 months, um, or close to 24 months. So um, again, I'm Dan Bennett. I represent the Auto Dealers Association. We are about 500, over 500 businesses in the motor vehicle industry. Um, we employ over 14,000 folks in the state of New Hampshire. Um, we are opposed to this bill, um, as we have been historically when they do come up. Um, 
this bill most recently, as was mentioned, in the Transportation Committee on the House side, as it was heard and reviewed and studied, left that committee with a recommendation of ITLs 11 to 1 by that vote. Um, and um, we, we hope that uh, it would leave this committee with an ITL recommendation as well. Um, there is no consumer backlash against the safety inspection program. Um, most recently, when it passed, thank you. When it passed uh, the House, there was a public opinion poll conducted on one of our New Hampshire radio stations. 67% uh, of the population that, uh, that voted was in favor of keeping the annual program. Most recently, there was an editorial in the Union Leader this past weekend that said one year is right for New Hampshire. Um, and speaking to our, um, I guess, our microclimate that we have in New England, both of our uh, most close neighboring states, uh, Maine and Vermont do, in fact, have annual safety inspections for their motor vehicles. So, um, Senator Kelly, you had a quick question about whether there's a statistic that relates mechanical vehicle failures um, to accidents and injuries, and just to address that, because um, I, I won't get into too much of the technical repair side of things, but to address some of the study questions. The National Highway Transportation Safety Agency did study that, and their study that was conducted um, found that mechanical defects and or worn equipment on vehicles was a causative or aggravating factor in 12.6 percent of, um, of crashes. So they stated over 850,000 accidents annually could have been avoided through preventative maintenance or um, uh, preventative maintenance to repair mechanical defects. So um, I'd, like, I'd like to, I guess, address that. Um, the Pennsylvania study that has been mentioned a great deal is um, is the most recent study on the issue that has been conducted. It involves the most recent data. The data that was used for the study was from 2004 to 2007. Um, and just to mention uh, a couple of the findings that was there is that nationally, vehicle safety inspection programs are a significant factor in lowering crashes. The Pennsylvania program um, it was found to reduce um, crashes, uh, fatal crashes between 115 and 169 instances which translates to 127 um, to 187 fewer fatalities annually. They uh, did, in fact, extrapolate that out to a cost-benefit analysis of what each life was wor worth. I'm not going to get into that. Um, it's a National Highway Transportation Agency um, component and, and um, calculation that they do. But the summary in the, of the Pennsylvania study was this, is that the results of the research clearly demonstrate that the Vehicle Safety Inspection <coughs> Program in Pennsylvania is effective and saves lives. Um, and with all respect to um, the, the sponsor of the bill, savings lives is not marginal. And these, are, these are New Hampshire citizens, um, and we believe we should do our best to keep them safe. Um, when it was on the House side, um, Director Bailey made a comment that I hope I have license to use, but it, um, this is too risky of a study to conduct with New Hampshire citizens, because we have other studies that show that periodic vehicle maintenance and inspection safety programs and save lives. So um, I'd like to mention that. Um, and then, the, you know, the, the, um, the, that's, I guess, the study component we have provided um, all of them to you. New Jersey has been mentioned a few times as far as their safety inspection program. Um, they did, in fact, and just to address it, they did, in fact, scrap their safety inspection program because it was a $17 million cost to the state because it was a very different program than ours. It was done through regional stations, staffed by um, state agency. Um, and what they did, in fact, was they, at the same time, they enhanced their vehicle inspection regulations for their agencies um, with the ability of roadside stops, random roadside safety inspections, um, as well as um, enhanced trooper ability to um, stop people for believed um, safety violations. Um, as, uh, as well as in the case of a traffic stop. So just to address that program. There, there, was a, um, there was a mention of the emissions program and us switching to some form of biennial and an example of um, Los Angeles. Um, but I would say, and I think if the Department of Environmental Services does uh, speak to this, emissions testing in all 50 states is not a one-size-fits-all. Every state is different. Some states do it very, very differently than we do through putting a car on a rack and spinning it to 60 miles an hour. Um, and doing tailpipe testing versus the way that we currently do it um, through the uh, onboard diagnostic system. So um, i just mention that real quick. Um, and then the last thing that I'd state is that um, this program is about finding um, a balance. We don't think it's a, it's a program of, of under-regulation. It's a program that keeps New Hampshire citizens safe. 
um, and, and we hope that, that you find the program of value in, in that as well. So, um, with that, I would take any questions if there thank are any. You. Are there any questions? Senator Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bennett, for your testimony. Uh, you were referenced to the Pennsylvania study. I yes. haven't had time to fully digest it, but I've been reading through it a little bit. Okay. Um, it seems to look at states with a program and without a program, but doesn't seem to distinguish between an annual versus biannual program. Is, is that correct, or do they look at that effect? In other words, the effectiveness of an annual versus biannual. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember as to how they differentiate versus just pooling the, um, the national accident data, whether they then further broke down into the state's uh, part. That I, I don't know. And, um, off the hip, I don't want to answer, but I can certainly um, dig around in a little bit, a little more as well, the same way you are, and get back to you on it. Thanks. And I will. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I have uh, Pete McNamara, auto dealers, signed in, opposed, not wishing to speak. Okay. I have, I have John Hort, uh, opposed, not wishing to speak. Christopher Nicopolis, opposed, not wishing to speak. I have David Hammer, opposed, not wishing to speak. Actually, I would like to speak, please. Come forward, please. Good morning, and thank you for your time. My name is David Hammer. I'm the owner of a Contemporary Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Milford, and I'm a resident of Bedford. And I strongly oppose this bill. I need to apologize. I missed Named the bill, but that's my fault in being naive at this uh, or a rookie. Uh, the debate surrounding this bill is not about reducing government regulations, but rather it's about public safety. When a licensed and trained technician performs a New Hampshire safety inspection, he or she is evaluating specific safety elements of a vehicle at a specific moment in time to determine if the vehicle is safe to remain on New Hampshire roadways. These elements include tires, brakes, steering, suspensions, uh, headlamp and taillight operation, windshield wiper operation, body and frame integrity. If any of these vehicles does not meet or exceed defined measurements or tolerances, or is inoperable at the time of inspection, the vehicle will not pass New Hampshire safety inspection unless or until the item or items are repaired. Critical to really understanding the inspection process and the impact of biannual safety inspections as proposed by this bill is that the safety inspection is conducted and based on a brief moment of time. And why is this important? Well, let's look at tires. Tires fail safety inspection if the tread depth is less than 230 seconds of an inch. In common sense terms, that's the thickness of a penny. So if a tire comes in and the tread depth is 330 seconds, it passes. Common sense and practical experience tells us that these tires will not last six months under normal operating conditions. They will clearly not last 24 months. Brakes. Brakes fail safety inspection if brake pad thickness is less than that same 230 seconds of an inch. And under normal conditions, brakes won't last 90 days uh, if, if it, it breaks and the brake pads are, are slightly higher than that. And that while brakes that are metal on metal, may in fact stop a vehicle, the key question is how quickly. Some have argued that vehicle owners will take it upon themselves to properly maintain their vehicle, replacing tires, brake pads, bulbs, wiper blades as they wear, or repairing suspension and steering components as they fail. Experience shows us in the field that this is not the case. In my dealership, every service customer that comes in, regardless of where they purchase the vehicle, when they purchase the vehicle, whether it's a 2000, 11 or it's a 1994 receives a free multi-point inspection on their vehicle because I feel and we feel that it's our responsibility as dealers to provide our customers with the information needed to properly maintain their vehicle. This inspection covers 23 different items. We grade the items green for good, yellow for it's okay now but you ought to think about it next time you come in for oil change in a few months or red it needs immediate attention and more often than not Unfortunately, our recommendations go unheeded unless the vehicle is being inspected for its annual safety inspection. Even though, in the long run, it is less expensive to repair brake pads than it is calipers and rotors. Another example, we buy vehicles, or vehicles that we buy in trade, often have New Hampshire safety inspection stickers issued three to six months prior to when we buy them, or when we trade it in. 
However, when we put them in our shop, they don't pass inspection at that point in time. Now, that's not to say that these vehicles didn't pass inspection when the sticker went on, but what it does tell me is that the vehicle has subsequently been driven to the point of being unsafe to drive, and yet it's still on New Hampshire roadways. Clearly, these drivers are not responsibly maintaining their vehicles. Let me personalize this a little bit. My older son is a new driver. He's 16 and a half getting ready for college, so you know what that's about. But I can do everything in my ability to improve the odds of keeping him safe. I can ensure he wears a seatbelt. I can make sure he's driving a safe and well-maintained vehicle. And I can constantly talk to him about his safe driving habits. However, what I cannot do is keep him safe from other drivers who choose to not properly maintain basic safety components of their vehicles. Biannual safety inspections will exponentially increase the risk to, to, to all drivers. If a driver chooses not to wear his or her seatbelt, they're putting their own lives at risk. But driving an unsafe vehicle puts my son's life at risk. This bill should not pass. It's a public safety issue. I'm happy to answer any questions. And I invite all of you to my shop, my dealer. <coughs> I can show you exactly the cars that we take and trade, the condition they are when we trade them. I can show you cars that we're inspecting every single day. And I can show you what our process is. And you have my contact information here if you have any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, Daniel Weed? Daniel Weed. Daniel, my apologies. Thank you for your time. Well, this bill provides uh, some exciting challenges and some interesting testimony for everybody. Uh, for the auto repair industry, uh, there's folks that say it's a, you know, a losing battle, so to speak, because of the safety involved and whatnot. The, if the purpose and intent of this bill is to get the government out, of our lives, then, then great. But as far as saving us money or saving your constituents money, I don't see it happening. You've doubled the fee to the shops, and what's to say that the shops aren't going to double the fees to the consumers? How much have you really saved? And now you're also talking about going from an annual inspection to a biannual inspection. So now you're taking those repairs from a preventative state or preventative maintenance, where it might have cost, say, 100 or $200, to an emergency repair where now, as you've heard testimony prior to, that it may be towed in, it may create an accident, and now you've gone from, say, a two or $300 repair to several thousands, maybe including bodily injury. So what have you really saved? Have you really saved those constituents that much money and saved them from themselves? Uh, you talked about people making valid and good decisions based on what's happening out there. It was just last year that, <clears throat> excuse me, and one of our executive counselors voted against the extension of the OBD contract uh, because his car, in fact, wouldn't pass the test and it would cost him money to replace it. So who's actually making these valid and good decisions? Uh, I really, you know, part of me as far as a consumer, uh, I can see it taking more money out of my back pocket. Uh, the repair shops, I think the reality is it's going to, in the end, make more money because we're now doing repairs that are two or three times more expensive. But in the end, I think to leave the existing program in place is the best way to go. Thank you, thank sir. you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. I have uh, Jim uh, McIntyre, who's opposed but not wishing to speak. And I think my last one, I've gone through everyone, is Mr. Fitzgerald from the Department of Environmental Services. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Michael Fitzgerald. I'm uh, with the Air Resources Division of the Department of Environmental Services. Um, and uh, uh, my division and my staff, in conjunction with the Department of Safety, implements the emissions inspection portion of the uh, uh, inspection program, uh, which is known as OBD2, Onboard Diagnostics. Um, and that part of the program was implemented in 1998 in accordance with requirements under the Clean Air Act. Uh, and I want to say that uh, most of our testimony and the discussion today has been with regards to safety. Uh, I'm not here. I have no expertise on safety and I take no particular position with regards to uh, that portion of the uh, uh, of the discussion today. Uh, my 
my expertise and my testimony will relate to the emissions testing part of the program. As I mentioned, it is required under the Federal Clean Air Act, and uh, cleaning the air is in response to federal standards. New Hampshire is in violation, and has been since the early 1990s, of federal air quality standards for ozone. When you're in violation, uh, there's a zero-sum game involved. There are, uh, are emissions from cars, there's emissions from power plants, emissions from your homes, uh, and a wide variety of sources. And our job is to balance those and to reduce them in a manner that meets federal air quality standards. If we don't get reductions from one sector, we need to get more from another sector. So the bottom line here is that uh, uh, emissions testing is responsible for reducing emissions from the transportation sector, which represents approximately 30% uh, percent or to 50% or more of pollutants that cause ozone here in New Hampshire and cause us to be in violation of the Federal Clean Air Act. I also would like to mention that the emissions inspection is an electronic inspection. There is no subjectivity involved. You, when you go in, it's conducted in conjunction with your safety inspection for uh, uh, consumer convenience. We work with the Department of Safety and implement this inspection at the same time so that we don't have a separate inspection paradigm. But we also, uh, all that's done is your car is connected to a computer. The computer uh, downloads information from computers on your vehicle and that tells us what the emissions status of your vehicle is and whether certain components on your vehicle that can affect your emissions are uh, operating properly and reducing emissions in the way, manner in which they are expected to. You've heard a lot of testimony even previously probably about um, uh, non-related things and people talking about gas caps and so on. Anytime the check engine light in your car goes on, it's because there's something wrong that, that increases emissions in your vehicle. Um, and that's all. That's federal law. Uh, so it may be a spark plug, it may be a muffler, it may be something that can, many things that people will say are not related to emissions at all, but if your spark is not proper and you're not getting the proper combustion, the emissions go up. So I just want to be very clear that this is not a subjective test. The computer on your car tells what's going on and relays that information to us and that's the basis of a failure or, uh, or a pass. Um, so there's no subjectivity involved. Um, this has been in place since 1998 in New Hampshire and we implemented this program as a compromise at that time. The program that New Hampshire offers has always been the minimum that the Clean Air Act requires um, for the air quality situation in our state. And as was mentioned by Mr. Bennett, different states have different air quality situations and have different balances between industrial and transportation sectors. So what we've done is tried to introduce and tried to have this program be the least onerous to consumers as possible while still achieving our obligations under the Clean Air Act. Um, that being said, since motor vehicles emit more than half of our pollutants, it's very important that we achieve the reductions from this sector. And as federal standards, we implemented this in 1998, since then federal standards are decreased in response to public health analysis that says EPA is required to revisit these standards every five years. As the standards are lowered, we may need to do more. We're in that position right now. The federal standard is being lowered this year. It will be lowered uh, probably this summer in response to an EPA five-year review. Therefore, we need to analyze and determine what New Hampshire needs to do in order to meet that new standard. If we don't get the reductions that we need from motor vehicles, we'll have to get them elsewhere from the business and community um, um, sectors, um, from, from other situations. So this is a tool that's in our toolbox. Um, we need to maintain this tool. The question of annual versus biennial, right now this is in our state implementation plan, which is a federally required document and federally enforceable as an annual program. As, and I want to thank Representative Murphy who contacted us and has attempted to work with us on this issue. Um, as, as he mentioned, uh, it would be up to EPA to approve us changing from an annual to a biennial program and we would have to do that in the context of a demonstration to EPA of how we're going to meet the standards. So we'd have to show them where we're going to get the other reductions that are necessary to meet the standards uh, as, they, as they decrease. Um, failure to meet that federal requirement um, in, a, in a timely manner 
could subject the state to loss of highway funds. Uh, that is the sanction under the Clean Air Act. If we do not have implement a vehicle inspection program, we could uh, uh, be cut off from all highway funds. That's an issue that the Department of Transportation uh, spoke to in the House. Um, I want to point out that the Motor Vehicle Inspection Program since 1998, more than 10 bills have been introduced to either repeal it or to, to uh, change it to biennial or to make other changes to it. Every one of those bills since 1998 has uh, been determined to be uh, not feasible to pass and uh, uh, voted inexpedient to legislate, I'm sorry. And uh, so yeah, in terms of looking at just emissions, I would ask you to recognize that this, this bill could put New Hampshire in violation of federal law, could sanction, could put New Hampshire in sanctions. Um, we, we would need some time to work with EPA to figure out what our need is, what the, what the requirements will be under the existing standards, and where those additional reductions would come from. So I appreciate Representative Murphy mentioning that um, he's open to an amendment that would, that would uh, uh, be more open-ended in terms of the time frame, but that would, you know, it's important to recognize that New Hampshire must, under federal law, continue to have the vehicle inspection program annual until we can make that change. And I would say that the time frame on that would, is somewhat open-ended. It would probably be a couple of years to make that demonstration with EPA. Uh, so again, I take no position on safety, this is, but if you do choose to uh, go a different route, recognize that safety and, and emissions inspections have different requirements. And um, again, I would also mention that this is, uh, we believe this to be a consumer benefit, uh, similar to the safety inspection as was mentioned. Um, changing your spark plug today in response to your check engine light and you know, with a $20 or $50 repair, whatever that might be, um, will save you. Uh, potentially hundreds of dollars by not having damage to your catalytic muffler and thousands of dollars in many cases. Um, and very, very simple, small preventive maintenance that's required. And Mr. Weed over here is my mechanic. Um, we're very friendly. I like him very much. He never sees me unless my check engine light is on. Um, and he never, <laughs> or, or I have to come in annually for my inspection. Um, so as good of friends as we are, uh, our relationship is solely based on the need of my vehicle. Uh, and that's the purpose of the check engine light. So, so with that, I'll close my testimony, and um, I'm happy to take any questions. Jay Dunn, thank you very much. Um, I believe that is all the people I have. Is there anyone else who signed in that I missed? Seeing none, I will close the hearing on Senate our House Bill 540. Thank you, and remind everyone that um, we're going to have an exec session next Thursday. We have a lot of bills. I'm not sure if we'll get to all of them. So I don't know if this will be one of them, but we are exacting next Thursday.